human being, and that's what we all have to be. I'm so happy. Damn right. I yes. <laughs> well, thank you. General Grant, thank you. Shape. He goes out because he has no other uh, opportunities, and you know, for Melville, uh, though this created all the experiences that would be so profoundly important to his fiction. So, yes, uh, I had two questions. One is, what do you think of John Huston's film adaptation? And two, when did the critical reputation of Dick start turning around, and what were the circumstances of that turn? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, John Huston's film is is great. I mean, it's it's Moby Dick has to be the hardest film, uh, hardest story to make a film because the white whale doesn't appear to the very end. You know, it's you know the, the Jaws they they move it up a little bit, um, but it's a real challenge as a filmmaker. And what I really like about the Houston, well, the Ray Bradbury script is is great and. Um, uh, I based Mayflower on uh, Martian Chronicles, uh, but uh, uh, the the uh, I just think it's you know there's so many iconic images attached to that that it it's almost got a life of its own. And uh, your other question was, oh, when did Moby Dick start happening? It really wasn't until after World War One uh, that it it got rediscovered, and uh, it, you you. Very quickly, and it's interesting, even Hemingway, as a kid, as a high school student, is, a, is aware of Moby Dick. And, you know, so it's, it's coming up, and I think, you know, the experience of World War I is really what gave people the, 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 the cataclysm uh, with which they could begin to appreciate this novel uh, in its proper, timeless context. And uh, so you, you see, by the time Hemingway and, and all, all those other authors are in Paris, uh, indications that Moby Dick is being used as kind of a litmus test. You know, if you've got the goods, you like Moby Dick. Faulkner talks about in the late 20s, says, you know, if there's one novel I wish I had written uh, that I haven't written, it's Moby <laughs> Dick. And I was, I was just, uh, when I was on book tour with Last Stand, I was down uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, and uh, was reading Moby Dick in anticipation of writing this, and uh, went to see Faulkner's home uh, down there. And it's pretty much left the way it was the day he died. And there in the living room is a Rockwell Kent Ahab. And, um, um, and so, you know, clearly that generation embraced it. By the centennial of the novel in 1951, it was recognized worldwide as a true classic. And, and it's, it's part of the landscape from here on in. Yes? Hi. Um, I haven't read Moby Dick yet. I very rarely read introductions anymore to books until after I've read the book. Is this something you recommend before, during, after, or does it matter? Uh, you know, I would, I, I think you should read it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think, yeah, uh, the, 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 Whale attacks the ship and it sinks. So uh, yeah. I actually, I uh, I actually got a piece of hate mail. For, I uh, wrote an introduction to the Penguin edition of Moby Dick, and I got a letter from someone uh, accusing, "How could you tell me that the ship was going to sink?" And I thought, "Oh well, okay." <laughs> but but yeah. So if you're not worried about that, I think, uh, hopefully it will provide you with. Uh, uh, reasons to, to return to it, but really, all, with this book, all I want you to do is to read Moby Dick. If you just read two sentences of this, then pick up Moby Dick, I, this, this is successful. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. Shall we take a couple more questions? Sure. Uh, right here? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, Moby Dick is one of those books that You know, uh, Ahab's Wife um, is, is a, a great uh, novel. Moby Dick, one of the few failings of 
Moby Dick is that there are very few women in Moby Dick, um, which is, but uh, the, 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 the wonderful premise of Ahab's wife is that Ahab had a wife. And, uh, uh, and she, she uh, Gina, uh, that, that novel um, uh, recreates, you know, is a wonderful uh, other angle, feminist angle almost, on on Nantucket at that time, and that's sort of the other story that's you know only hinted at here, but uh, the the whole uh, cultural support system that whaling had on Nantucket, and it was in many ways the women that made it work, and um, and so that that's a that's a wonderful uh, offshoot. In that. I, I know this is you're a Nantucketer, but I often wonder why it is uh, supposed, as you said, that the home ground of Moby Dick is not the beautiful gardens and wide streets of New Bedford by the entire. Yeah. Is that personal? Is that you versus me? Uh, are you from New Bedford? Yeah. <laughs> hey, really like your sweatshirt. <laughs> you can buy one on Wednesday. No, you're going to the museum. Yeah, I'm going to go into New Bedford. So this is good. A good warm up. I got to get defen defensive. Uh, get my figure out how to say this. No, well, you know, hey, uh, Moby Dick has it both ways. You know, you, it begins in New Bedford, and New Bedford was the the leading whaling port at this time. But Ishmael is out to go to what he calls the great original the beginning. And and uh, I am a Nantucketer, but uh, I hope you're aware that New Bedford was founded by Nantucketers. <laughs> uh, we, we regard it as a satellite operation. <laughs> but but no, the... Um, Financially the, still is. <laughs> <laughs> no, New Bedford is my favorite city in America, and I'm really excited to go there. And uh, the, the Maritime Festival is one of the great, great events. So, um, But no, I think... Uh, the, the, the whole culture of whaling is such an essential part of this book. Um, and, and those places where, as you alluded to it, where the fact that you know, there are these wonderful houses in both, both areas that immense wealth. Uh, at one point, Nantucket was about the wealthiest little community in the world. And it was all derived from ships that would go out to the other side of the world, kill whales, hack them into bits, boil it down to oil, bring the oil back. And then it would light uh, the streets of London and Paris or be the substance of the candle by which you read your books. And um, you know, all that, it was you know, just one of these, uh, uh, truly a global economy. I think you, I, I think you mentioned uh, you know, it's not an easy book to read. And I, I have read one time, and I thought you might comment on this, one of the challenges for the modern reader was this enormous amount of religious kind of illusions throughout the book and the way he writes. And it, it's all kind of particular to understanding and beliefs of religion in 1850 that are challenging for us to kind of grab a hold of and understand in, let's say, 2011. So I, I'm curious about your perspective on actually trying to read the book, some of the difficulties and challenges, and particularly the one that I mentioned the issue of religion and you know the vast difference, uh, the way people talked about it and understood it 150, 60 years ago. Yeah. Well, you know the the whole lang language that Melville uses is is Shakespearean in a way, and so that that creates its own potential difficulties. But the, the elusive nature of the prose, you're right. You know uh, that this was Melville wrote at a time where people had vast swatches of, of the Bible memorized and and. Uh, attending uh, sermons sometime twice, twice a Sunday uh, in which uh, these kinds of things were driven in them. So things that would be clearly uh, uh, something that his audience would have, would have gotten are not necessarily obvious to a 21st century uh, readership, readership. But that said, I think uh, there, he has latched on to uh, a plot line and, and a, a, a mythic landscape that gives you enough to sort of get these things resonating in their own way. I, 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 why I think it, it, it so is, is a timeless piece of literature is that you come back to it, if I, you know, I've read it repeatedly, you see different things each time uh, as your own experiences or what you're focusing on changes. And, 
And you know, yeah, there there will be. Hey, I I read Macbeth. There's illusions that I'm missing, uh, that we all miss, and it's it's it is part of the challenges. But I tell you, in this uh, this day and age where our, our attention spans are so challenged, uh, there is nothing like sitting in an airport with reading one paragraph of Moby Dick, even if you don't necessarily get everything. The rhythm and music of the prose, the you know, uh, is is like a breath of little fresh air, and um, and I think that's where it comes from in terms of keeping it fresh, even though we may not get every reference he, he's he's referred he's he's got. Yeah, that's a great point.